Easter, a damnable heresy. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that reads, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. All right, so let's break down this first half. But there were false prophets also among the people. In Old Testament times, there was the false prophets among those people even as there shall be false teachers among you. You being us, the New Testament, is the false teachers. All right, so from the beginning. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, means secretly, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now notice these, now notice the heresies these false teachers bring in has to do with denying the Lord. That's why it's such a damnable heresy, is denying the Lord who bought them. All right, it's not denying him or the Lord in word, though. Recall what Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So how they deny the Lord is by denying the only sign he gave to prove he was the Messiah. That being three days and three nights in the tomb, prior to being resurrected. So let's go to Matthew chapter 12. And we get to Matthew 12, start in verse 38. Verse 38 says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, so for those who may not know, the scribes and the Pharisees, those were the two main denominations of Judaism back in the day. So the religious folks of the time. Uh, then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, keeping in mind they're talking directly to the Lord Jesus Christ, Master, meaning teacher, we would see a sign from thee. In other words, they said, show us a sign, show us you're the Messiah. So this is the one and only sign the Lord Jesus gave, verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. Verse 40, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, it was actually a fish, not a whale. Because a whale, see, the the dick, the uh, fairy tale of Moby Dick would latch onto that whale. So you would think Jonah wasn't really dead, but was alive in the whale's stomach and uh, had a fire going, thereby discrediting the only sign of the Messiah, see? So he was actually swallowed by a fish, not a whale. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. See, so if Jonah didn't really die, neither did Christ, because the sign of the Messiah is the sign of Jonah, according to the Lord Jesus there. So how, again, the, uh, remember that the resurrection itself was not the sign of the Messiah. The sign is the amount of time spent in the grave prior to being resurrected. Three days and three nights, just like Jonah. Now, before you go claiming that's a Greek idiom, meaning parts of days and parts of nights, keep in mind Jonah was not originally written in the Greek language at all. The book of Jonah is in the Old Testament. And originally, uh, Jonah was written in the Hebrew language. 
See, these false teachers who denied the Lord do their best to discredit Jonah and his book. Thus, it would discredit the only sign of the Messiah, also called the sign of Jonah, three days, three nights in the tomb prior to being resurrected. Because there's the type and shadow. Jonah was swallowed by a fish and died and spent three days and three nights in the fish's belly as a tomb. And then the fish vomited up Jonah on the shores of Nineveh, where he preached a message of repentance that the people believed, and then they, they, were, they turned from their sin. So they were thus saved. Similarly, the Messiah would spend three days and three nights in the grave dead. Then the earth would vomit him back up, where then it would confirm all of the signs, or I shouldn't say all the signs, because the only sign he gave was the sign of the Messiah, three days, three nights, but confirm all of everything he said. That's a better way of putting it. And he even hung out 40 days after he was resurrected, continuing to teach about the kingdom of God, um, according to the book of Acts, chapter 1. So God instructed Christians to keep the Passover, not the pagan counterfeit called Easter. And all God's holy days are outlined, are outlined in Exodus 23. They were never done away. Jesus never done away with them. He just showed us how to observe them in the New Testament way. And I'll be saving that for another video. So God instructed Christians to keep the Passover, not the pagan counterfeit called Easter. So let's return to what Jesus said in Mark 7. Picking up where we left off, we'll read Mark chapter 7, verse 9, and then verse 13. Mark 7, verse 9. It says... And he said, he, Jesus, said unto them, the scribes and Pharisees, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. All right, notice before we read verse 13, that the commandment of God must first be laid aside, because God's command came first. All right, now verse 13. Making, see, they do that. Let's read verse 9 again. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. See, so the commandments of God are put aside first, because they came first, and then they're replaced by the traditions of men, or the church fathers and thus making the word of God of no effect, and making deceiving you thinking celebrating Easter honors Christ, but it actually denies the only sign of the Messiah. See, that's how the devil works, subtly. And it looks, it appears to be right on the surface, but you go compare it to the word and it isn't. So let God be true, everyone be a liar. Those who celebrate the tradition of men, a supposed Friday night crucifixion, and a Sunday morning resurrection, deny the Lord by denying the one and only sign he gave, three days and three nights in the grave. This is why the pagan Easter is a damnable heresy. False teachers injected this tradition of men into the church during its early years. Then when Roman Emperor Constantine the Great called the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, he pretty much solidified Easter in cement, you could say. Passover was out. It was illegal. And Easter, the pagan Easter, was in. Thus how the Western world has come to celebrate Easter and do it thinking they honor Christ and his resurrection when it actually denies it because the Easter tradition only has Christ in the tomb one day and two nights. This is why false teachers always use the Greek idiom argument. I study much Greek myself, and I must say that this Greek idiom is for Greek idiots. Easter Sunday does not commemorate the resurrection. Easter does not honor the true Christ. See, the false Christ was born the 25th of December. The false Christ was killed on Friday. The false Christ was resurrected on Sunday. The false Christ doesn't require you to turn from sin to be saved. The false Christ doesn't require you to do your part. The false Christ just wants to bring your, be your friend and not bring any correction. So 
it boils down, to simplify everything and bring this to a close, it boils down to one of two things. Either the Good Friday, Easter Sunday tradition is a fable, or you and I have no Savior. 